All right, thanks for joining Daily AI's No Code News of the Week. Uh, this is week 41 ending. A lot of news here. Let's start going over it all. All right. NAN raises $180 million at $2.5 billion valuation. This was in the news recently, obviously, because it's here. It was funny timing, too, because it was like the day before the maybe of or whatever of the open AI release. I mean, we'll see what happens. This stuff makes you feel like, yeah, this is going to be around a while. And then a lot of people are, you know, yelling, hey, it's over because OpenAI just released a competitor. I think right now, and I think we'll talk about this in the next one, too. Like, yeah, there's a lot in the air. This is good. They made that extra money to keep their company more than going for a while in, in innovating. And the challenges that OpenAI brings in with their release will, will be welcomed because competition is good. So that's, that's good news for us who are using N8N. The, like I said, the other big news was OpenAI launches Agent Kit. Uh, everybody's heard about this. I will cover it maybe in a video next week. My point is it goes hand in hand with N8N. It is not a an immediate competitor. It's more of a complementary way to do the AI stuff. But then, you know, that leaves N8N less important at that AI level, maybe. I'm going to show how they can connect, how you can take advantage of so much of N8N's integrations, its ability to be a backend and API, leaving the OpenAI aging kit to be the agent part of it, the AI part of it. And I don't think OpenAI will ever go that far. So it's going to be great to see them both working together. So we'll see. We'll see. Google Opal expands in 15 countries. First of all, it's good they're not canceling it, but it's growing and it is an amazing idea. And it's done well that you can start using it. I use it for a few workflows and I want to start using it for more. It's interesting. It's a different approach than OpenAI took. It's maybe less agentic, but it could be more. But in the end, these are all pointing to the same thing. Building stuff should be as easy as prompting. So these stories so far just pointing to that direction less code more building with ease so it's nice to see i am betting this one's a repeat zapier ai features and mcp integrations but in the end i was using zapier yesterday and i'm like geez yeah this is nice you can go there you can prompt your way to a potential workflow i didn't use it yet i was just trying to compare some things as i start to do some more research and, and maybe i'll release some video on that but just a, a reminder they have the mcp they just did a good job. They made it really simple to connect the MCP to the uh, system you have and then use all these integrations they have. It's, it's all about the integrations in a lot of ways. A lot of the jobs I got into building at code level, it was always that integration moment that was always like, oh no, now we got to do this. And it was doable, but you go from days to just uh, an hour. <laughs> it's a big deal. This one came up last week as well. Uh, so the make.com AI tool code executions. 11 Labs, another kind of no code flow system. <laughs> I mean, it's getting good. I mean, the now that the industry's settling down and we understand the pathways and the use cases, we can make these kind of out of the box, ready to go pieces that can fit together. So 11 Labs and their voice. A lot of customers want voice driving their answering services or reaching out to people. This is one more step closer to that. Bubble.io, I bring this up here because it is a good no-code solution. Enterprise stuff, it's kind of cool. Any enterprise right now still coding should really start investing in these tools uh, to reduce code and start using these tools that get you going out of the box without the code, without the large teams, without the debt that comes with code. So Bubble.io, it's glad that I'm glad they're, you know, they're in the news doing this. That's a good sign. All right, just a quick ad here. Um, I like this Ridge Charger. It's the Rig MagSafe compatible magnetic power bank. And I have an Android phone, so sometimes I need it. But here's an Apple phone. And you can see that it not only does MagSafe in the stand and everything, but you'll see in a moment it can connect via the lightning port for the older phones. Um, and that's what I really like about it. Cause you remember, you got to remember when you do wireless, you're always losing energy as you charge. So with the wired charging, you get faster charge and just, you know, you're going to get all the charge into the phone. And of course as USB-C. So we win there as well, because I mean, it's USB-C and it can hook up to my Android phones and any future Apple phone, um, that I most likely won't own, but other people in my family do. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. And it hook connects to the new uh, Google phone. So that's a great win as well. So there you go. Nice, strong connection. 
they will charge that way. And of course, you have the stand as well. All right. I mean, uh, I have some links below. If you use those, it does help to support the channel. So please give it a go. Thank you very much. I brought this up a couple of weeks ago, but Notion AI assistant to AI agent in a Times Best Inventions 2025. I don't know. I mean, Times, when I was growing up, was a big deal. I don't know if it still is. That's some nice recognition, though. And, and they are doing some interesting stuff. I mean, I don't use Notion just because I haven't, I, I just haven't gotten comfortable with it yet. I, I still think about going back to it, but I gave up after a little while. But maybe I'll head back to it. I do like what they're doing. I do like having my own systems like in software. So if I could connect the two, maybe that will work out like Ovidius. No, what's it called? Obsidian. So Obsidian is something that it's not an alternative to Notion, but it's just another way to manage notes and with maybe a little bit more integrations there. But then you're working harder there. So I should go back to Notion and just try it again and give it a go. I think it was the pricing. The pricing was just so high. All right, the next one is, speaking of high pricing, I don't think this article really gets it. Like the problem's not no code. The problem is Flutterflow in a, a hosted solution. There's a lot of open source solutions for no code, BuddyBase, AppSmith, and others. So the no code solution that Flutterflow offered, the price is going up. But what does that really mean if, if you're a company saving $10,000 to $100,000 a year and, and not having developers, not having code, not having everything to maintain? It's sometimes it's a little bit relative. So I would like to see what the amount was and why it would be a sense of like not great. So, but it's there, the prices are up and it seems to be getting in the news a bit. Google Gemini 2.5 computer use. I mean, this is cool. And uh, I'm using Manus and there's one other open source one, but I mean, I had trouble today with Manus. It couldn't go to a particular website that the customer wanted to go to. So to know that Google can do this and try it with that, I can show them how to jump back and forth between these tools to do what was to them hard before. Now it takes over their computer, I think, so I'm gonna find out. But if I could put in a VM and run that VM and run another VM, then that person could run multiple tasks at once. But a Google Gemini 2.5 computer use, I think the computer is actually in the browser. <laughs> that would be amazing. So if it is. But anyways, so keep, look for that. Watch the YouTube videos on that and give it a try because when you can automate at that level, at the computer level, uh, then you go from like, hey, scraping a few pages to more because the tools that the AI can use to, to not just manipulate the data and get the data and share the data, it just grows. So that's an exciting one. The computer use thing is just, it's just a matter of time, I think, before it takes over. Whether that means I'm sitting here on my desktop with 20 VMs or I'm sitting here uh, on five computers, I don't know. But my point is it's just taking over. And then when you get local LLMs in there, uh, the price will go down as we do all of this like work. It's going to be interesting tool base. And, uh, and on that note, Microsoft Copilot Studio 2025 Wave 2, no code AI automation platform. Again, maybe it's just my news feeds are a little bit too full of this, but to me, and that is tricky, to me, it seems like a lot of consistent message around these tools that you can just drag and drop and, and get some stuff done. And I read somewhere in some Twitter or tweet, I mean, or LinkedIn, where some people will say, don't use those because you'll have an edge case and they can't do it. And the point is that I'm bringing this is like, if you build everything for that edge case, you'll overbuild everything. If you build what you need to as quick as you can and then hit an edge case, you'll figure it out. Either you'll figure it out or you'll you'll figure it out no matter what. So I wouldn't avoid these tools because of the ultimate maybe edge case. I would just build your idea out as quick as possible and get it working. All right, the last post is, it's a good video on uh, BuddyBase. I'll, I'll save a link in the description or the notes. And I mean, BuddyBase and AppSmith are really interesting. I'll add a video to AppSmith as well. They're good videos. Some of them are not good, but I'll give you one that I thought was good. But it's just another example of what you could be using for no code that's free to host. Uh, of course, all these have their licenses and potentially limitations. AppSmith seem really flexible, but BuddyBase tutorial was a good one too. So I'll share that. It's an older video, but heck, it, it just help me to really quickly understand the potential with BuddyBase. That's all I wanted to share for today. If there's other news you have, just share below. And then uh, go follow the Substract, I, uh, Substract, Substack. I post uh, the notes there. 
I post uh, trainings and workflows. Uh, and if you're a paid subscriber, it just really helps out with the channel. Otherwise, hopefully the you like the ad. I'm removing the Google ads and just doing that. So hopefully that worked out for you as well. So you have maybe less ads during this. All right. Thanks for watching. And I'll bring you some more news next week. Thank you.